How's it going everybody? This is Always back with another video on the channel. Today I'm going to show you how you can make a build for your Android project using command line from your Ionic project. So in the last few months I've been working with Ionic and one thing that I usually do or have to do is open Android Studio and then create a build from there. Whether it's released build or it's just a debugged build. So the way you generate an APK file can be very tedious, but in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can stay in your uh, editor, whether it's a WebStorm or VS Code. No need to open Android Studio, you can still stay in your editor, and then using command line, you can make the same build that you do with the Android Studio. So it will save you a lot of time and it will save the hassle of opening Android Studio and making a build. I'm gonna take you to my computer now and we'll see how we can automate that process. Okay, so I'm at my computer now and as you can see that uh, we got a code on the left and right side, I've got a Chrome uh, which has my application uh, up and running. Now, usually in Ionic Capacitor project, what you have to do is use this Ionic app run android command what this command is going to do it's going to open up android studio and once you have your android studio up and running you will take it from there so you will use the android studio uh, gui like this play button and you maybe start the emulator you run that application in an emulator and you know the normal stuff that you have to do now it's saying the windows part it doesn't know where my android emul uh and industry install is so i'm gonna just manually open android studio once i've got android Studio up and running i'm gonna go and point to this android project but you see what hassle that i have to go through i want to show you the problem first and then i show you the solution and here i've got this same application uh, running in android studio if I want to run on an emulator, I will go and select the emulator and click on play. It will install the application. Also, I can go to a build menu and then say rebuild. Uh, if you haven't built before, also there are something like, you know, sync with a greater project. So all this you have to do opening Android Studio. But you don't need to do this. You can stick to your editor and not touch Android Studio, but still be able to install, open up emulator, and also, uh, you know, you could build uh, your application being in the temp uh, emulator. Now, this is basically uh, a time saver that saves a lot of time for me. And I'm really, uh, you know, putting my time to coding, not actually spending time in building my application. So I'm going to clear the terminal. A few things uh, which are required to have this process up and running. First of all, I would like to go to environment variables. I want to show you some of the environment variables that I've set in my computer. So here you're going to make sure that wherever you have downloaded SDK, you have this uh, variable Android SDK root, Android underscore home as well. Also in the system variables, I've specified some paths. If I go to paths all the way down here, I've got this uh, tools bin. Uh, platform tools, emulator, and then I've also got a Gradle. Now all of these things are actually installed by uh, Android Studio. How do you find where is your SDK is installed? I'm gonna take you to the File Explorer and I'm going to go to D Drive. And here is the SDK folder. So I have actually dished Android Studio default a place where it installed this SDK, I've downloaded separately and then just pointed Android Studio to go and look for SDK into this folder. So the way you do it, if you go to tools, you go to SDK manager, and then you go S, uh, Android SDK location. So this is the same part that you can see I've specified. Okay, if you don't want to do this, that's fine. If you just install Android Studio, just come to this place and see where your SDK is installed. And I go to your environment variables and then set those paths. So Android Home, Android Root, SDK, uh, Platform Tools, and also we got some other set that I'll put that in the description of this video. Let's stop the uh, Android Studio now. Now I'm going to go to Terminal. Now being in a terminal, first of all, in Ionic, you do Ionic Cap Sync Android. Okay, once you added the project. 
Once you have the project uh, synced, then we'll use a few commands to actually build our application for Gradle. Actually, I'm going to stop this and I'm going to, uh, you know, re-add this. So let's go to the build folder and I'm going to delete the build folder from our Android project. Now I don't see any build there, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is, first of all, I'm going to sync the project. It's not going to build Android project for me, but it's just going to, you know, get all the plugins from Capacitor and Cordova and just put them into our Android project. Okay, the uh, sync part is done. And if I go here, you see there's no build for them. The way you build it, go to Android Studio and build your project. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to open another terminal. Let's close this through one. And I'm going to go to CD Android. Okay. Now I'm in this folder. Inside my uh, terminal, let me zoom in a bit. I could zoom in. Yep. So here I'm going to type Gradle w.bat file, but it's not pointing to that. So I'm going to type this Gradle w, and you simply type this command assemble debug. Okay. Enter. And now it's going to use this file. Being on a window, it's going to use this file. And this is the same process that happens in Android Studio. Now it says uh, there is a problem with this Google plugin. Okay, so what I need to do is basically I need to first of all build the project. I'll type just a build command. Now let's see if it if it uses this build folder. Okay, so the project has been built and I can see this build folder now. So if I go to app, go to build, output, APK, debug, and here is our APK file. Let's just say if I uh, get rid of this APK, how do you generate an APK being in a command line? So what do you do is target that a Gradle wrapper file, which is in your Android project produced by Capacitor, this file I'm talking about. So I'm using git bash in Windows. That's why I have to type this dot slash gradlew, but if you're on a command line, you probably just directly access this. Now I've got this gradlew, and then I will type here, assemble debug. Now it's going to do its thing. And now we should see an app folder, build outputs. And here I've got this app dash debug.apk file, which I can, you know, drop that into emulator and just, you know, do it. Now, as you can see that it didn't have to go through all this. Now, another thing that you have to do is you need to know how you sign your project. I'm going to take you to my package.json file. Instead of typing this here, here I have a list of scripts that I've written, which are actually I'm going to explain, and that will make it easy. First of all, let's take a look at how do we open up an emulator. So you gotta make sure that you have the emulator uh, created by Android Studio, or you use the ADB manager to create that. But for now, I'm gonna just use emulator, enter and it says no AVD specified. So what I need to do is so I'll do emulator dash AVDS dash list. Enter list. Nope. Doesn't really give me the list. Maybe like this. Okay. Nothing but I know what the emulator I have. So I'm gonna type emulator at pixel three A. Enter. Okay, doesn't really give me that as well. So I'm going to use this command and it's suggested by and so this was actually dash list dash avd. So list dash avds. Now we have this pixel 3a. So let's use avd and then the name is pixel 3a. Enter and you can see 
emulator is starting there you go now we got this emulator started but we haven't installed the application yet the way we do is writing another command so let me show you that there you go so that emulator is running now i'm going to go to this terminal open another instance and now here i'm going to say cd android you gotta go to android folder and type gradle w and say install debug once you do that it's going to take that debug apk and build it again and here that we should see an application installed so here i'm gonna just remove this to show you guys that it actually installed it so let me rerun that command okay then the fancify that fancify it should be here there you go i deleted it and it's installed so as you can see that you don't have to go to android studio which saves a lot of time now here are some of the uh scripts that i've written that i will explain to you in this uh video so let me just bring them up the first thing is uh build task so in your npn uh so your package adjacent file what you do is Use this script and cd to android folder and then run this. That will build your project. Then I've got this another script which shows me what are the tasks that I can do with this Gradle wrapper. So if I type here uh, dash Gradle W ask, it's basically going to show me all the commands available for the Gradle I could do. So it says install task. So I've just used this one install debug or install debug android test uninstall all uninstall debug you know you can use all these commands and you can play with your emulator being in a command line which saves a lot and lots of time there are some publishing tasks which you can publish binary directly to the google play store uh, we're not going to go through those but let's run this so we have an apk what i do is i first sync the project and i build it again and then I will, you know, install the APK and I will run this emulator. Okay. I'm going to change the rename this because I probably have changed the AVD name. And then we have a live APK. So I want to install live APK so I could, you know, uh, add my, add modification to my code and then see the changes in the emulator. Another one is this one generate key store so to be able to sign your uh application you need to have a jsk file jk this one sorry jks file which is used uh as to sign and then google will determine for all the later builds that you upload to the google play store so this is required you can use uh you can generate this via Android Studio, but here is a simple script. You can pause the video or look at the description of this video and see. You just gotta access the key tools and then use this script. And here you change the name of your key. And then here is some validity and some, you know, uh, some more values for the alias. Now, once you generate this key, you will have this file, okay? And then you need to use this file to sign your. Uh, APK. So here is my sign APK script. First of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually run this APK signer.bat file, which is available here in the build tools. And I use this command sign and this KS basically it's saying which file it should use. So I have generated this key with this name in my project. You might, uh, will see. There's a file exists, so this one. This is a file I generated with using this key tool, so I'm accessing that. And then I'm saying password is this one, okay? Don't worry, you're not gonna use this because you don't have this file, so password is just this to you. And then you have this, uh, you know, APK uh, path. So dash this out will tell you what is the path of your APK. So here is the release uh, APK signed properly. So if I just delete that and run this script, it will generate me this. A few things I'm doing here because this signed release is actually built in this folder. 
If I go to app, sorry, Android project, and you go to app, build, output. So here you see only debug, right? So if I run this command, so gradle w, I will say assemble release. Okay. This will generate an APK which can be used to sign, okay? Uh, which will be basically unsigned APK. You have to sign it before you can upload it. Never ever download, or oh, sorry, never ever upload this debug APK to your Google Play Store because there's a lot of security risk. It's not being handled here. So you got to release one. This is the one I've got. And then I use this script to actually sign that. And then I have that file which I can go to Google Play Store and upload it directly. So here you can see the prod APK that I'm building with this Ionic project. We have a command for verify APK as well. So this is what I want to show you that, you know, it saves a lot of time if you have these scripts done for you. I will first of all, uh, you know, initially used to go to the Android Studio and then rebuild the project and then, you know, Use the mouse a lot. I don't like to use mouse a lot. I'll have to click this button and do this. And then, you know, a lot of clicks. But here, what I do is just use the script and I have things done for me by computer. And I just grab this APK file and upload that to the Google Play Store. Makes it very, very easy. Okay, I uh, hope this video helped a lot of people out there developing Ionic applications. Um, also, if you have any question, please leave a comment down below. Also give this video a thumbs up if you like the video and yeah, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Cheers.